This is the 10th uh, trip uh, that our First Class Club has sponsored. I'd, I'd love to list them all. Uh, they've sent us to Berlin, Dublin, uh, Jerusalem, Sao Paulo, Nice, Port of Spain, Havana, Auckland, and last summer was Bogota. The first half of the trip is always touring and taking photographs and getting inspiration. The second half is getting that inspiration and putting it onto the pieces. We knew we were going to have an experience where John, at the onset of this year, was going to lay a wreath at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier after he had, had laid the wreath. It was my mom. She was the one to make the announcement that we're going to Vietnam. My parents had an amazing trip to um, Vietnam and Cambodia that they raved about, so that left a big impression upon me. The first impression I had of Vietnam were motorcycles. I could not believe how many, and they're all honking. At the hotels we did, a lot of times they have buffets, but the buffets there were so fresh, and the decorations, the way they would cut the vegetables or the fruit, and all the herbs around, and they would be in these beautiful wicker baskets. It was just a very inviting platform to want to eat a lot of food. But it's okay there, because it's very healthy. In Hanoi, um, we stayed three nights at the Hotel Metropole. Our, our room was absolutely gorgeous. Um, the, you know, clawfoot um, tub was amazing and, and John adored that. Some very funny things happened. We had a long day in the uh, Nin Ben region where we um, got in a very small wooden rowboat and, and and I was hit so hard that this was the, funny, the funniest thing ever that we're in the middle of nowhere Vietnam and John is rowing me down this um, very obscure river or middle of rice paddies. It was absolutely hilarious. He's had a heat stroke. So imagine this, we're on this boat called Ginger. So then they're like, do you want to go on a little bicycle ride? And so we're like, oh, that sounds like leisurely fun. So we're going along, everything's fun. You hear the crickets, you're in the middle of the jungle, it's beautiful. And all of a sudden we get to this like, 60 degree incline. I could not even understand what this is not a leisure ride. I could not believe how hard it was. But you know what was better after that when we got to the village? The beer. The cold beer was the best. So we had a lot of fun excursions on the trip. I have to say the best was the rice paddy. So we were able to go into a farm and go out in the rice paddies and see how the rice is harvested. We got to put on the hat, get the nets we put the fish in, all the things that they actually use, the boots. They showed us how to move water from a lower, lower area to higher by using a basket and rope and two people. And the left hand, the left hand you carry more. When you see pictures of Vietnam, you often see um, um, Halong Bay. Um, with these rock formations coming out of them. And I went kayaking off the boat um, just around those rock formations. And it was so peaceful and, and gorgeous. Before we got to our very nice resort um, in Hoi An, um, we wanted to buy a lot of champagne <laughs> for John. Uh, that's his favorite drink. And if you're just buying bottles at this like super nice resort, it's going to get totally out of control. So it was our, our tour company who had prepared the guide to find where you could 
buy champagnes and it was very challenging, but they nailed it. Um, Hoi An, the, the town itself, is known for their uh, custom uh, couture clothes. So I went a little overboard and, and kind of got a new wardrobe, but um, it, it is, I'll wear them for years. A wonderful tradition of our international um, art adventures um, is try to, to connect with people um, and, and present them a piece of artwork as a, as a gift from John and also sort of as an act of diplomacy from um, uh, you know, visiting Americans to say thank you to our host country. And so we, we had, John had three, and the first one was a, um, a doctor named uh, Todd Pollock. Uh, he is with, uh, or is, is with Harvard and a program they have there um, that really is influential in uh, HIV AIDS um, uh, prevention and treatment. Um, then we also did two more um, as thank yous uh, for our beautiful stays. We uh, presented some artwork to the general manager of the boutique resort where we stayed in Hoi An as a thank you. And then we also presented one as a thank you to the GM at the Metropole. And that was a particularly fun presentation because I was expecting a um, Vietnamese person, <laughs> but no, they're 100% American and 100% from Houston, Texas. Uh, we had no idea, a super nice guy named uh, Joseph Kalina. Uh, I think he said he went to high school over in Memorial. The artwork actually was of the hotel. You know, it was um, a, a gift that hopefully, you know, they would maybe want to display there um, from an American artist. John created the series and the series is named after Hoi An. It's always named after where he creates. We were at a, a gorgeous resort called the Boutique Resort. We had a, a large villa because John needs space and he needs to really be able to spread out. We left on this trip the first time ever and we and did not know what I was going to paint on. So we knew there was a lot of markets, and so we decided before we left to find what they were going to be painted on there. Then we finally found this area that had bowls. The bowls looked perfect. They had depth. We loved the circle of it. So we got all 11 bowls at the market. We had a private pool when we were in Hoi An. And I was able to work on the pieces in the pool. And so one side of the pool had the row of the bowls, and then the other side had all my supplies. And so I put a little umbrella over me again because it's a little hot there. So I would work on a piece and then hold it in the air and swim across the pool and lay it down and get another one. So it made it a really fun, um, creative experience being in the water. Why you should collect um, this series. For years, I've been a particular fanatic about John's international series. Every year we keep one of them. That's why he makes 11 every year because, you know, in theory, if the first class club members, of which there's always just 10, if they were to all acquire one, um, we would still have one. This year in particular, especially the way the pieces are oriented and the bowls, it allowed for more original artwork and more contemporary abstract and also more imagery. So, so many of the pieces just have a thousand stories associated with them. Part of the love of art for me is um, talking about it and telling your friends or, you know, whoever, you know, guests to your home about the piece of artwork. And it, if somebody walks in your house, they will, they're gonna ask you <laughs> immediately about this piece of art. They're, I, I guarantee. So you should collect this series. <laughs>
me and Ryan and what we do on this international trip. For being uh, so supportive for so long um, and extremely generous um, in what you're able to do for John and the places you've been able to send him. Um, this trip in particular was a very, very big one and we, we could not have made that trip uh, without the FCC. And, and that's the reason that we, we created the FCC and we are so honored that people are still thrilled to be members is so that uh, no matter what the circumstances, this artist that they know and believe in um, would be able to do an annual international series. And it's such an incredible and special part of our life working with y'all. You are contributing to John's legacy, maybe greater or equal to um, any other person or influence or entity that has had an impact on his career. So thank you so much for being a part of the First Class Club. Margaret Ferenz. Carolyn Watts. Daniel McFadden. Ellen Yarrell. Rosa and Bob Pollard. Judy Lindsay, Laura Parkin, Joan and Richard Jennings, Julio Montano, JP Anderson and Alfredo Tijerina.